Mom is like the quintessential doting, loving mom. So whenever she cooks, it's all about her being a mom to a lot more people. Sa Tagalog, maging parang ina ng bayan. Hi, I'm Malu, aka Maling De Vera, at ako ang ina ng bayan. Twenty twenty was a year that no one expected. Our whole world was turned upside down. Everyone was affected in one way or another. Businesses were either forced to close or unable to operate due to the imposed restrictions. In this time of confusion, many of us turned to food as a source of comfort, while an enterprising few saw it as a possible source of income. Or maybe it was the opportunity to do something that they were meant to do. These are the pandemic kitchens. I start, before I start cooking, I pray first. Now we go, Lord, you're the chef. Just use my hands. No? And you cook, making use of my hands. Hi, I am Patrick and I'm the youngest. No, that's not true. Don't believe him. <laughs> I am Hannah and I'm the youngest, the fifth child. I do the photography. Are. Yes, and I do the inventory, logistics, and the purchasing. So it's really like a family effort. Her style of being a mother is that of service. So whenever she cooks, whenever she makes food, it's always with that we say bonga. Like you put so much ingredients, flavors, texture, so much of yourself in what you do is very consistent with the kind of character that my mom has as a person. Well, all of Amita began, um, I think at around May. It was um, the third month of the lockdown. It was a product of uh, an afternoon walk or a morning walk around the village park. I was like walking and I was thinking, thinking about my mom's best food. There was like an epiphany of sorts. So what happened was I suddenly remembered my mom's putanesca. Before pa naman, I've been cooking putanesca for my family for like more than 20 years na. So I'm medyo confident because people, when they taste my putanesca, they say, oh, this is... Uh, uh, you should sell this, Tita. Huh? It's really, really good. So a lot of them told me that. But ganun lang. No, hindi ko sineryoso. Pero when Patrick, my son, asked if I, I'm willing to sell my putanesca, nabi ko, and it's pandemic, and nakikipag-away na ako sa, ano, sa social media because of, you know, yung mga not-so-good comments. Yun, ayaw nila ako makipag-away, so binigyan na lang nila ako. Magluto ka na lang, Mami. The reason why the name is Ola Mamita is because every time you come home, you say, Hi mom, is there food? And she's been a mom to us, a great, a terrific mom. And I guess moving forward, Ola Mamita is all about her being a mom to a lot more people. She is a woman who overflows with love. Mm -hmm. And I guess in a nutshell, that's what Ola Mamita is all about. I love my Ola dogs. Oh. My number one fans. See mom when she cooks. She wakes up super early in the morning. 4 a.m. to be exact. A very early morning person. And a very unnocturnal person. She's not a nocturnal yes. person. Not at <laughs> absolutely. She sleeps at 8 p.m. And wakes up at around 3 to 4 a.m. because that's her time to meditate, to reflect, to pray. To pray and all. After that, she already prepares for the orders, the ingredients, pre prep and all. And then we can't bother her basically. Like, if you're not gonna help me with the kitchen. And she doesn't allow us to help her anyway, so <laughs> it's, not, it's not like we have a choice. I don't want people around when I'm cooking because I get distracted. I want to give my 100% attention because I might miss uh, an ingredient. Like, I forgot to put uh, the, 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 this, this herb or ganyan. So I won't be able to give my patron 100%. There's like a three meter or two to three meter radius 
like we can't even come close to the stove. Not just social distancing, <laughs> like we are physically distanced with her, socially distanced with her, yeah. we are emotionally distant <laughs> from her. They cannot talk to me when I'm cooking. Not even the president of the Philippines can talk to me when I'm cooking. I'm serious. <laughs> When I cook Miss Ijo's bolognese, I prick it, prick the sausage, so that the flavor from the sausage will go to the sauce. After pricking, we'll start with sautéing. I use a lot of garlic when I cook. I don't scrimp on garlic, because I love garlic. And then you sauté it, and then you add all the onions and ground beef. And then as, as uh, it is being sautéed, half cooked, you add the spices, and I make use a lot of spices. And then I add the um, tomato sauce, then let it simmer for like 15 to 20 minutes, and then it's ready to be served. Of course, uh, Putanesca is the closest to my heart because it has a lot of precious stories with my lovey Davi, my late husband. My mom, before being Ola Mamita, my mom was a wife to my dad. My dad was um, very sick, very ill. My dad was sick for nine years. Uh, he had cirrhosis of the liver. It started out as hepatitis C and then it progressed into cirrhosis of the liver and eventually multiple organ failure. Through those nine years, my mom was just beside my dad. Like, would, my dad would wake up at 3 a.m. In, in intense pain because it's a chronic degenerative disease. So the pain is like, we couldn't even imagine it. And my dad would wake up at 3 a.m. and he would ask for putanesca, like from scratch. That's how, it, she, does, she doesn't have prepared putanesca, pre-prepared putanesca in the ref. So she would make putanesca from scratch at 3 a.m. Well, my husband is very fond of sauces, like mechado, pochero, anything with sauce. He loves pasta too, he loves gamba, sal salpicao. When we're still living in Makati, my husband, I see my husband, he would invite the street kids, you know, and would feed them. So that was, I, I, that was the start. I, it, I think it was my husband who influenced me. Uh, he has a very big heart. And then, you know, when we became missionaries for substance abusers, and then he passed away, I, uh, I carried on with the work, and then we, another door opened for prison ministry, and there are a lot of hungry people there. Uh, I'm concerned about the health of not only my family, but uh, every, everyone's health. Some chefs are trained in culinary school. Some chefs are trained in the best kitchens in Europe or in Asia. But some chefs, I guess, are trained in life. Life trains you to be a good cook, not because you want to earn primarily, because you love the people around you. And maybe you know that that person might be living in his, his last few weeks or days or hours. And the best way that you could like send them off into the next life would be by giving him the best food. It was really a dark, dark time for our family, but she made it a beautiful one. I guess the first thing that people will um, observe no, when, when they eat Hola Mamita food is Grabe naman, ang social, like, ang bongga, ng flavor and all. But that's just secondary because it's coming from the hands and the heart of a mom that really serves and really cares. I, got, I get amazed with uh, the comments and the Lord was actually, he was his answering my prayer. I have this friend, she's living alone um, and she misses her family and then when she um, ate the food of mom, she just broke down in tears because she just felt so much love and warmth. It's like an embrace. No matter how tired I was th during the day, I will always ask Hannah, what's the comment? Hannah, what's the comment? Please ask. 
Mommy, they're still eating it. They will come in later. Ay ko kasi, no matter how exhausted I am, tired I am, parang dead tired. But when I hear them saying, oh, it's the best pasta. Oh, it's heavenly. Oh, it's uh, superb. Nawawala yung pagod. Yun ang reward. Ang gusto ko reaction pag nagbibigay ako o nagpapakain ako is, the, you know, it's funny, but I always hear it. They say, I forgot my name. This girl's gonna be a doctor soon. And um, uh, my other sister's gonna get married. And my mom found her second wind in life at 61. So imagine life is just beginning for all of us. And so like seeing my mom have a good headspace, seeing my mom become better overall as a person is for me a pandemic miracle. I guess moving forward, I, I, I wish to see my mom serve more people and we're planning to to set up a, like a commissary. We feel that a commissary might be um, the better next chapter for all Mamita because of the resources that we have. But who knows in the future maybe no, um, what God would um, open for us. As of now, mom is very happy with what Ola is. We're just here to support mom. Um, we're just here to be of help to her in any way we can. We just want mom to know that we will just be here no matter what. I hope that the Ola family will not only uh, grow in number but become healthier <laughs> because of Ola food. <laughs> The real hope is that my mom would be able to express her nature and her nature is that of being a mom, a terrific mom, a loving, a doting mom. The food that we experience, we eat here at home every day, pandemic or no pandemic, has always been the best. As a mom, I really give my all, my, my everything. Buhay ko. You know, it's not uh, a part-time job, being a mother. You know, I will be a mother to them. Kahit may asawa na sila, I will still be playing the role of a mom. That's why I think moving forward, all of Mamita's heart and soul, the desire of my mom is to serve more people as if they are her children. Sa Tagalog, we say, ina ng bayan or nanay ng nakararami. And I guess that's what my mom is all about. She really wants to serve people, to love people, to make people feel that they are seen. Because we live in a generation that sometimes you don't feel that you're seen and heard. Like sometimes she would cook a big batch of pasta for garbage collectors. She just wants to see people and for people to feel that they are seen as well.